nothing is going to see people that they do. They, they took 20 years of data and mashed it together and gave you legends and leaders with no geographical um, uh, stance to it, really. And that didn't suit people. They didn't like it. It wasn't really the names. They just didn't like it competitively, I guess. I, I don't know. It makes the most sense to do it geographically. If you even have to do it, the Big 12 now has gone division division free, which uh, guarantees you the two best teams in the league will play each other at the end. And as we've seen, sometimes the team who had the best record in the regular season doesn't win the championship because maybe they beat the other team in the regular season. The other team wins the game in the championship game. So um, that can be kind of a tough result for the team that won the regular season uh, uh, matchup and even the regular season championship. And then number two comes by and whacks them in the championship game and gets to go to the playoff for the big bowl game. So uh, I'm not sure whether I like either. Um, maybe divisionless is the best way that the, the Big Ten should go and, and just keep – protected rivals and rotate the rest of your schedule. Keep maybe two protected rivals and play one at home every year and one on the road every year and then rotate the rest of it. Might be the best way to do it. I don't, I don't know. But uh, Visions, the Big 12 is kind of showing that Divisions are kind of an antiquated notion, I think. But um, when you have – you've had some teams that have pushed Clemson in their division and then Clemson goes off and plays like a 7-5 and five team from the other division – well, that that team from their division, you know, was nine and three or ten and two, and didn't get a sniff, you know. So, I don't know. It, it, you can't make everybody happy. It, the Mountain it, West and the Western Athletic Conference combined into one huge sixteen team thing, and what happened was at the end of the year, there was one champion and fifteen teams standing there holding the bag that didn't win it. And you know, with fit, sixteen teams in your league. You're not going to win the championship very often if there's parity in that league. And I mean, Boise State comes along and wins whatever league they're in every year. But, um, you know, it it was hard to keep everybody happy the bigger these mega leagues have become. So, you know, how about this? Go get you a team and get better. You know, focus on that rather than the format. I don't I don't know. I think the format in the Big Ten is just fine. I wouldn't have necessarily said that a few years ago, so I don't want to get caught into what a lot of people do, and that's that they fix last year's problem, mm -hmm. and and that's their format, and they don't look at the broad landscape, understanding that it's cyclical to an extent. I think the elite's the elite and probably will continue to be, and the bottom dwellers are the bottom dwellers, but um, the teams in the middle tend to change to a certain extent. But with Michigan State faltering, in Minnesota, I don't want to put too much on one season, but possibly elevating. And Nebraska with the probably best potential to elevate out of the middling teams, that it's not an East-West issue anymore. I think East and West are pretty comparable. It's an Ohio State and everybody else issue. It's so how, how do you fix it? <laughs> you just let it play out. But in regards to East and West, yeah. uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, potentially Nebraska and Iowa, not even talking about Northwestern and Purdue at this point, which are decent programs. It's a pretty deep, thick Western division. They just don't have the one elite team, but there's only three or four of those across the country. I like what the West does in the fact that each year a, a different team, four or five of those teams could come out of there. And if things go right and they have the right schedule, they could go undefeated in that division and come into the Big Ten championship game with one or no losses with a chance to play, make the playoffs. That happened with Illinois a few years back. Wisconsin had, was one game away from playing in the playoffs, so, or at least being undefeated or, or, or one loss and being considered. So I think you wanted to say Iowa there, Tony. Well, I was I, searching for that Illinois year. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Definitely Iowa, I think 2015. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> The 2032 Illinois team will also be uh, their first opportunity to make the playoffs. But, you know, and we keep waiting for Nebraska. Minnesota is on the uptick. I think for those coaches, they all feel like they have an opportunity to make the playoffs if things go well because there is there is some parity, but, you know, you get that right mix of seniors and that right one playmaker and 
you know, things start happening, you get that magical season. And then it's, well, then you still have to beat Ohio State or Penn State, you know, at the end. And that's, you know, but but I, I think maybe maybe you should have to to make the playoffs. 